Richard Ellis Roberts was a British writer and translator of fiction, plays and hymns. Born in 1879 at Islington, the son of building contractor Richard Roberts and Anne Catherine Corbett. Educated at Merchant Taylor School in St. John's, Oxford, he began writing for the Pall Mall Gazette in 1903. He was also literary editor on the New Statesman. In 1920, he married American divorcee Harriet Keane in Paris. In 1926, a review of his made a drama critic sue him for damages. And the accuser did win the libel case, winning whole one farthing in damages, or 0.25p. In 1932 he left the New Statesman, and in 1933 he became a literary editor on Time and Tide. He left in 1934 and emigrated to America with his wife in 1939. He died in 1953 in Monterey, California. He is best remembered for having translated Henry Gibson's Peg Gint, having written a study on Ibsen and having translated several hymns. Today we will review his only work of fiction still remember today, his 1923 The Other End. The Hill is a very masterful story of a man on his way to Bridport passing by the Hill of Sacrifice, named so for reasons no one can remember, and finds there a youth calling onto a mysterious demonic power, attempting to sacrifice a dog to the inhuman presence something O'Brien must prevent. The Rabbit Road has a man and woman go to a furniture sale in the country and meet a strange man who may or may not be an imp, who forces Katie to drive her bicycle by night to smash living rabbits under wheel for his own sick delight. The Wind has a young man fascinated by a governess, who seems very fond of the wind, too fond, as when he follows her, he sees her embraced by a titanic humanoid yet inhuman shape forged of living wind. The Ebony Box is the story of a man who tortures his wife for years about the mystery of an ebony box from India, even on his deathbed. Under the sun has Helen fall for a stranger she finds in a burnt-out ruin of a house, yet the man seems somehow inhuman and cruel, especially when in the light of the spring sun, until Helen sees John in the company of his sister and finds out he's more than human. The Great Mother has a man seek to take part of the worship of Sibel before meeting a terrible end amid a rush of inhumanity. The other end has a boy seek the companionship of a female spirit who promises to let him cross over to the other end to avoid his uncle whipping him every day with a cat of nine tails. After having stolen his image of the Virgin Mary, broken his cross and taken away his rosary, and had his tutor find and steal his diary, all because his uncle wants to abuse him into not being a Catholic. Also, said tutor said he wouldn't report the uncle for abuse, as he would not wish to call upon a society that tries to interfere with the sacred claims of the family. The Minotaur is the only not-so-great affair. It's a retelling and rationalization of the Minotaur and Theseus story, where everyone in the story acts and speaks like British gentry. The narrow way is the story of a priest who brings his parishioners to church attendance by praying for God to start killing them with a mysterious disease, until he decides to pray to God to stop. The Cage has a man kill his drunken wife for trying to get a child from his nephew, and is sentenced to die of starvation hung from a cage, but is delivered unto death by Saint Candida. Robin is the story of a man who is really a fae turned into a man and being very socially awkward, before the woman he stays with agrees to marry him. His stories sometimes suffer from repetition, but overall are very good. The earlier half focused on Hellenism is a bit stronger. 